So this is the painting, The Ambassadors by Hans Holbein the Younger. And the portrait is of Jean de Dinteville, who we looked at last time, and George de Selve. And it is currently in the National Gallery in London. So um, this is from 1533, and it's best known for the anamorphic image of the skull, which is in the foreground of the painting right here. Um, when you give a deeper look, so this is, um, has allegorical elements inside of it, and that's something that's pretty interesting. So that's what we're going to talk about today, give an in-depth um, analysis of Holbein's The Ambassadors. Um, so Holbein's The Ambassadors is a puzzle. There's a code in the painting which is waiting to be understood, right? And you have, um, for instance, elements like the floor, which is similar to the one beneath Michelangelo's creation of Adam. You also have a six-sided star um, indicating that God created the world in six days. It also is um, the Trinity twice over. Um, you also have a celestial globe, which points out the difference of religion between London and Rome. Um, this was happening during the time when uh, Henry VIII was fighting with the Church of England and um, during the time when he was um, trying to marry Anne Boleyn. Um, and you have on the sundial inside the picture, um, the date points to April 11th, 1533, which is um, Easter Sunday. You also have a lute with a broken string, um, which is pointing to the imperfection of this world. So here are some of the elements um, that we're talking about here. Um, so this painting memorializes um, Jean de Dinteville, who was the French ambassador to England and his friend George de Salve, and they, um, and he acted on several occasions as French ambassador to the Republic of Venice, um, to the Pope in Rome, and as well as England, Germany, and Spain. So the upper shelf of this painting, of, the, of this object in the painting is um, concerned with the heavens. So this is where the celestial globe, the portable sundial, and various other instruments which are used for understanding the heavens are kept place. Um, also, you have instruments there for measuring time. The lower shelf um, reflects the affairs of the world. Um, so it holds musical instruments, a hymn book, um, a book of arithmetic, and a terrestrial globe. <clears throat> so this painting was painted during a time period that was particularly um, tense um, between the rivalries of the kings of England and France and the Roman Emperor and the Pope. And um, the French church was split over the question of Reformation, right? So Reformation had, um, it was brand new during this time period. And the religious and political strife was reflected. So um, the religious and political strife that was happening are reflected symbolically in the details of the painting. So you see up at the top here, there's a crucifix, which is half obscured by this green curtain. And then um, this, this is symbolizing the division of the church. Um, there's an open book of music, which is next to the lute, which has the broken string, um, which has been identified as a Lutheran hymnal. And the book of, uh, and the book of mathematics is open on a page of divisions, which opens with the word dividert. Um, there are also um, non-political details throughout the work, such as um, the ages of the sitters being written in Latin on the dagger sheath, um, dintevilles, and on the top of the bookshelf, dissolves. Um, so this sort of represents the split um, and function between the two men. So a couple of other things to notice about this painting. Um, the anamorphic image, and I'm going to put this um, up the next time we come in so that you guys can have a chance to try and look at it, um, is when correctly projected, it looks like this. It's a skull, right? So the point of the painting in general 
is for you to understand so that there's the heavenly realm which is on the top and there's the earthly realm which is at the bottom and the thing that um, Holbein wants you to do is it forces you to either look at the things of this world right and to understand life in terms of this world or in order to have this memento mori or this reminder of death right this is something that we see um, in the skull at um, the uh, the um, descent from the cross that we looked at um, in northern renaissance painting um, last week um, when you look down you have to crouch down so you have to humble yourself and you have to look at the painting from a certain angle in order to be reminded of your mortality and in order to be reminded of the things of the things of heaven what god wants us to focus on um, so it's really sort of an unusual painting in that sense so it uses some of the standard um, tricks right of uh, it uses some of the standard tricks of mannerism but it does so in a very different way and with, and with a very different character than a lot of the stuff that we're looking at in um, the Italian mannerist works um, the skull is frequently shown so there's um, Durer, um, there's the skull is frequently shown in relationship to St. Jerome um, <clears throat> and it's meant to be it's meant to serve as a memento mori or a reminder of our own mortality so things that we don't normally see when we are alive um, our skulls are inside of our heads and sort of the reminder that that what's on the surface um, is the less important thing um, in light of our um, immortality or in light of our, mor our mortality <clears throat> 